Hello, this is Chaudhary Mahmood Anwar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I am going to explain how to conduct confirmatory composite analysis CCA in Smart PLS. Well, we know that uh, in covariance-based structural equational modeling CPSM, we assess the quality of a measurement model by using confirmatory factor analysis. The confirmatory factor analysis involves examining the item reliability, construct reliability, convergent and discriminant validity, and goodness of fit. So we use confirmatory factor analysis to assess the quality of measurement model in CPSAM. Mean when we are using MS software to draw the structural equation modeling, we use confirmatory factor analysis. But how to assess the quality of a measurement model in PLS SAM? Mean when we are using partial least square structural equation modeling in smart PLS, then how do we assess the quality of measurement model? Can we assess it by using confirmatory factor analysis? that is used in covariance-based SEM? No. To assess quality of measurement model in PLS SEM, we use the confirmatory composite analysis, CCA. Confirmatory composite analysis is a process for assessing quality of reflective or formative or both measurement models. So we know that uh, in smart PLS, we have either reflective model or formative model or a joint model having both uh, formative and reflective constructs. So if we want to assess the quality of uh, the measurement model, we will use confirmatory composite analysis. So confirmatory composite analysis is the method to assess quality of reflective or formative measurement models. Here at all 2020 described a stepwise approach to conduct confirmatory composite analysis. Now I'll explain those steps separately for reflective model and formative model. So here are the CCS steps to assess reflective model. The first step is loadings and significance estimate. So you will check loadings of your indicators. The standardized loadings should be greater or equal to 0 0.708. Whereas the T statistic must be greater than plus minus 1.96. You can also use confidence intervals method alternative to T statistics. If the confidence intervals exclude zero then it will give an evidence of the significant loading estimate the second step is the reliability of indicators you will calculate the reliability of each indicator and the indicator reliability should be greater than 0 0.50 the third step is to Calculate composite reliability. The composite reliability should be greater than 0 0.70. You can also use Kuhnbeck alpha reliability, but always remember that whenever you are using structural equation modeling or specially partial least square structural equation modeling, you should use composite reliability because it gives more accurate results as compared to Kuhnbeck alpha. The next step is to calculate average variance extracted. The value of AVE should be greater than equal to 0 0.50. The next step is to estimate discriminant validity. Check the STMT matrix generated by SMART PLS. The highest value of HTMT should be less than 0.85. If you find the highest value, 
that is less than 0.85, it gives you an evidence of discriminant validity for your model. The next step is to estimate the nomological validity. I'll explain this later. And the final step is to estimate predictive validity. I will also explain the predictive validity later. So this is the seven steps process to conduct confirmatory composite analysis for reflective model in smart PLS. Always remember, you will not use confirmatory factor analysis in PLS-based SEM. You will use confirmatory composite analysis whenever you are assessing the quality of reflective model or formative model. Now I'll explain the CCS steps to assess formative model. The first step is to establish an evidence of convergent validity. For this, what you will do, you will see that whether path coefficient between formative construct and reflective construct should be greater than equal to 0.70. If you get the value of 0 0.70 or greater, then this will provide an evidence of convergent validity. The second step is indicators multicollinearity. To assess multicollinearity of your indicators, you can calculate variance inflation factor and the value of VIF should be less than or equal to 3. The next step is size and significance of indicator weights. To have this, you must see outer model weights and the weights should be larger, must have a larger value. And for large sample, the significance level should be less than or equal to 0 0.05. And for small sample, the significant level should be less than or equal to 0 0.10. So if you get the larger values of uh, outer model weight with a good significance value, then you can say that the size and significance of indicator weights is there. The next step is contribution of indicators. You have to calculate contribution of indicators forming your construct. To check the contribution, you will see the outer loading, which is equal to correlation between each indicator separately and the construct. And it should be significant at less than or equal to 0.05. And the final step is to estimate the predictive validity. So this is the five steps process to assess the quality of formative model. Now I'll explain what is nomological validity. The development of nomological network is vital to establish construct validity in theory driven traits research. The purpose of developing a nomological network is to predict the relationship of traits with external criteria in advance from an established scientific theory. Posey et al. 2015 asserted that a construct exhibits acceptable nomological validity only if the interrelations between it and its antecedents are greater than zero. So this is very important to assess the nomological validity of your constructs. Therefore, here et al. 2002 formally included the nomological validity in the confirmatory composite analysis procedure. The predictive validity is very easy to understand. Psychologists and organizational researchers usually correlate new traits with external criterion or independent index such as psychophysiological functioning, job performance, or employee behavior to establish an evidence of predictive validity for new traits. So what you will do, you will correlate your construct with an external criterion or independent index such as performance or behavior or psychophysiological functioning of employees. 
if your correlation is an acceptable range, then you will get an evidence of predictive validity for your construct. But I would recommend that to assess nomological validity and predictive validity, in addition to assess correlations, you should also conduct the regression analysis to see whether your nomologicals or independent variables predict your dependent variable or new construct or the construct under consideration or not. So this was the method to conduct confirmatory composite analysis, CCA, as reported by Hare et al. 2020. Now I'll repeat, when you're conducting covariance-based structural equation modeling, you assess the quality of your measurement model by conducting confirmatory factor analysis. But how you can assess the quality of measurement model when you're using partial least square structural equation modeling. To assess the quality of measurement model, whenever you are running your model in smart PLS, you have to conduct confirmatory composite analysis to assess the quality of your measurement model. So to assess the reflective model, there are seven steps I have explained. And to assess the formative model, there are five steps I have explained. This is how you can conduct the confirmatory composite analysis. Thank you very much for watching this video.